Hello, welcome to Home of Secret Marais. I'm pregnant. <laughs> um, for those of you who follow me on Instagram, which I'm sure most people who are seeing who see that my videos are people who follow me on Instagram, but I shared a few weeks ago that I am pregnant. Currently, as I'm recording this. I'm a little over 16 weeks pregnant, so I'm over, over the pump, the pump, over the hump where, yeah, where you're, you can kind of relax more and, you know, not worry about miscarriage for the most part. And so, yeah, I guess I just wanted to recap, um, just how it's been so far, as best as I can remember, I guess. Just winging it here. I don't know the ex I don't remember the exact day that I found out that I was pregnant. I know that it was like a, I think exactly like a week after, or maybe a little over a week after, like my missed period. Like, so I didn't, I was just so nervous um, to take a test. Like with the other pregnancies I've had, I was taking, and even when we were trying, and I guess I should preface, those of you who don't know uh, my journey with fertility, um, well, I did get pregnant right away with my son, um, who's almost, he'll be three in April. 2024 and then I pretty much got pregnant right away with a baby when I tried um, a year ago and but then that I guess yeah I took a month like one month we didn't get pregnant second month we got pregnant but then that ended in a missed miscarriage and then after that we waited like four months to try because we were just trying to like get our bodies uh, healthy. We like had went to like a naturopath. It was kind of, it's hard to explain, but I didn't actually get like my hormones tested and everything um, before trying again. And, but we did some other stuff that I'm sure was helpful. Um, just, you know, for overall health and then after waiting four months, we started trying and it, we didn't get pregnant for six months. Like on the sixth month of trying, I got pregnant. So yeah, in that time, it was very, it was a, just, yeah, it was a weird time. I was very sad at first, like just the, cause you know, I got pregnant right away with my son and I got pregnant right away with the baby that I ended up miscarrying. And I just was like, what's wrong with my body? Like, what's going on, you know? Um, and I guess I kind of had, I just expected to be, to get pregnant right away. And I kind of had almost like I was entitled I wouldn't have said that, but I kind of feel like I was, like I felt like I was almost entitled to have a baby. And so, like another baby right away, like, I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. Um, just looking back, like, like, I don't know. There's a, like a quote. Someone who I follow has said this, but children are not a right they're a privilege or like they're a blessing. I guess like I kind of just started, like at first, the first few months of trying and not getting pregnant, I was very sad and just like, I don't know, it was very hard for me to see women um, get pregnant, like especially if they just get pregnant right away and have all these kids and it's like, cause like, I had talked about this in other videos, but like my dream had be, one of my dreams had become to just like have a bunch of kids and like have a big family. Yeah, I kind of realized that I was 
starting to idolize that. And so, yeah, naturally, um, especially if that is like an idol, then you're going to be very like sad when other women are getting pregnant and you're not. And, um, like they seem, it seems so easy for them. And like people probably thought that of me at, at like when I got pregnant with Charlie, maybe some women felt that way because I just just first time I got pregnant and I was young you know I think I don't know was I like 22 when I got pregnant with Charlie I think then I kind of like I know I have another video talking about uh, foster care and to try to like adopt through foster care and um, I still believe we we are called to do that and I do believe God like made that known to me for sure um but yeah i just kind of got set in in that mindset and i was like super you know trying to make it happen as soon as i could but yeah definitely had like a heart was developing more of a heart for like foster children and um children who need a home and need to um have like a new a new start a new um, people to care for them and like actually actually like teach them and guide them and um, give them provide what they need and so um, but also I was like well this is maybe this is how I if this is how I get a, a bigger family then so be it <laughs> so I mean I don't think that's wrong to desire a big family like I think God did put that on my heart for a reason and I'm glad that I was still like I became more okay with like uh, adopting being like the way that that might happen and I did have I did think like I did believe that I would get pregnant again that I would get pregnant again and have another biological child I just I knew it wasn't nothing is promised. I knew that I wasn't like promised that or guaranteed that I just, you know, I just know that there are a lot, there are women who do try for months and then they get pregnant and there's nothing like, no signs of any like significant fertility issues, but it just takes some time. Um, and I was seeing a, um, well, where is she? considered like a functional medicine doctor um yeah it's kind of hard to explain her title but yeah she focuses on like functional medicine and natural medicine and so I was seeing her and then um just kind of like with my hands open like you know I do Lord I do want to care for my body and like I want I hope this helps and like helps my body to work how it should and I don't know maybe something went wrong when I had a miscarriage and like I thought maybe the, the medicine I took um, or the prescription I took to like expel the baby that had been passed away in me for like weeks at that point like I thought maybe that messed up like my hormones somehow I don't I don't really know I know yeah some of my hormones were a little off um but they weren't it wasn't like yeah like it, it wasn't extremely off um so I had just been taking some like supplements and like going to infrared an infrared sauna to like detox and stuff and was trying to like eat more like fertility um enhancing foods like normally i don't know if i ever finished my sentence when i was saying this earlier but like before with the pregnancy with charlie and with the baby i miscarried and everything i was tr taking tests like e either too early like it was like okay like that was too early <laughs> i'm 
I, that was kind of a waste of a test because I know that they don't detect pregnancy that early. Um, or I would just take it literally as soon as I could, as soon as the test said I could. But this time I was just scared. But I had a feeling that I was like, I think things are different this month because I don't know, just something like my cycle was more regular. I can't even remember everything, but things were more regular, like, and I was showing more like fertility signs, I guess. Yeah, I just kind of had in the back of my head, like, well, if there's a month that I would feel confident that I feel more confident that I will get a positive test, this would be the month. <laughs> and it was. So, um, yeah, I, I was definitely like in shock. I was like, yeah, I was excited, but also nervous because of my previous miscarriage. And um, yeah, it was like, yeah, initially a lot of, a lot more excitement, but I think as like some of the weeks went on, I got more and more nervous just because I was approaching like the time when the baby that I miscarried had like passed away without me knowing it, which was around a little over seven weeks. And um, actually like, so I started feeling sick. I think I was like maybe five weeks when I started feeling a little sick, but then six weeks might've, I think I was like feeling really sick and then I think even like part of seven weeks, like the beginning of seven weeks. And then like I had a few days where I just totally felt fine. And it really scared me because, it really scared me because that's around the time when I stopped feeling sick with the baby I miscarried. And that's when they said like the baby had stopped growing and had died in my womb. Um, and so I was just like literally convinced myself and pretty much convinced Matt that the baby that I had like had another missed miscarriage, um, because it was like two days with me feeling totally normal and same time that that happened with the miscarriage, the baby I miscarried. And, but thankfully I had a... Pre, my first prenatal scheduled um, with an OB, which I'm, yeah, going the, the home birth route, but I just wanted to start out having like an OB so I could have a little more monitoring, like I could have like an earlier ultrasound, not super early, but it was like, I was a day away from eight weeks. Um, and so, yeah, when I saw, wait, was it? Oh no, it was a, sorry, I didn't have a prenatal um, that day. I had a, my like eight week ultrasound. So I was, like I said, like a day away from eight weeks. And, but it had been a couple of days that I felt normal. And so I like went into that appointment just like, I actually, we dropped Charlie off at his, Matt's dad's house because I didn't want him to be there and like experience like the baby being dead. I like told the ultrasound tech right when I got in the room like I like I'm I'm almost certain that I had, that I the baby died because like I explained the whole like about my past miscarriage and stuff and she's like well like she was very compassionate and she, she was probably like in her 60s and she was like well let's hope you're wrong and then she put the ultrasound um probe on my belly and like right away she was like there's a heartbeat and i was like what like i was just in shock i was like what what and i was like looking at matt and then she's like yeah like the baby's grow growing is perfectly on track and the heartbeat is really strong like I know it's really hard having you know like I'm sure you have almost like PTSD from having a miscarriage so I totally 
understand, but like everything looks good and if if something was wrong, like the baby wouldn't look this healthy and like wouldn't have this healthy of a heartbeat, wouldn't be growing on track and everything. And so I was like, okay. Like, <laughs> I was like so relieved, but also still like kind of scared. Like, I don't know, it was just hard to explain because like now I felt more connected to the baby. I felt a little more excited, but it scared me. And also that was, it was kind of crazy because like a year, so that was November 9th and a year ago from then um, was the day that I like pretty much found out that I miscarried the baby, that the baby stopped growing in me that I had, cause I had um, like my midwife just had like a little, um, you know, ultrasound um, program on her laptop. And so she, cause she knew I was like nervous cause she hadn't found a heartbeat the day before. And um, with the like Doppler. And so she did the, did a little ultrasound and she's like, I don't see, like the baby looks really small and I don't see a heartbeat and um, yeah, then I had to go somewhere else a few days later for like, to make sure. But yeah, so that was like the day that I found out that I miscarried. And then a year, exactly a year later is when I had the ultrasound and found out that this baby was like healthy and with a healthy heartbeat and was growing. And so that was just really crazy because I knew that beforehand that that was like the day but I was like thinking like this is like a nightmare because it's the same day a year later <laughs> but then after I was like wow this is a god thing because the timing is just crazy like I didn't plan any of this <laughs> um I did start to feel a little bit sick again um yeah, like I would like throw up here and there, but then I would feel better after. And I would just basically, yeah, I wouldn't feel like nauseous. I would just feel nauseous randomly here and there. Mostly I just didn't have an appetite. And um, yeah, certain things I just couldn't eat or smells, you know, but it was definitely less intense than my pregnancy with Charlie. I was very sick with Charlie. So that honestly kind of worried me a little bit. Like I just, I, so many little things would give me anxiety. And I just remember like praying, like God, please. I pray that I have, that I feel sick. <laughs> please help me to feel sick. I just, it'll encourage me. <laughs> and then I felt like I very clearly, like, a, yeah, like a thought that I knew wasn't my own thought because it cut across my own, it cut across my own thoughts. Like it just intercepted and it just was like, kind of like a download, I would say. Um, so I believe that to be God's voice. And he said, um, rely on me, not on nausea. <laughs> um, so I tried to hold on to that. It was definitely hard. Um, but I always kind of had that in the back of my head, like, okay, I'm, I was relying on like nausea. I was relying on that to like help me to know that things were okay. And if I didn't feel that sick, then I would just, yeah, like I wasn't really relying on God and like, and then I started just, and whenever I would feel anxious, um, I would just pray for the baby. Like, I would just pray that the baby would continue growing healthily and strong and um, with a strong heartbeat. And I would just pray that like several times a day. What, I'm trying to think if there's anything that happened like between then and then like when I got, heard the heartbeat at 13 weeks. I don't think there's really anything 
significant other it, I just didn't let myself be excited really like I would pray for the baby um, but I didn't want to be excited I, I didn't I didn't want to let myself be excited or think about like baby names or like the gender or like Charlie I didn't really want to talk about the baby much around Charlie um, Matt would but I would just feel like Please don't talk about the baby yet to him. Like, like he knew, but I just, yeah. I didn't want to get him too excited. Oh, I should, sorry. So when I heard, when I saw the baby on the ultrasound when I was like a day away from eight weeks, um, I had, sorry, then a week later, when I was like a day away from nine weeks, I had an ultra, sorry, not an ultrasound. I had my, my first, my actual first official prenatal, but I did tell her I was still very nervous, still struggling with anxiety. And so she was very sweet and said, okay, we'll just do a quick ultrasound on you. Let me just get an ultrasound tech. And it was literally like two minutes, um, which I'm glad, like I didn't, I didn't set out wanting like a bunch of ultrasounds, but it was very helpful to me to be able to see the baby again. And so yeah, the baby was like uh, a little bit bigger and than the last week and a strong heartbeat still. And so I was like, that gave me, yeah, a little more peace, but still, like I said, I was still not wanting to be like super excited or anything. And so yeah, then, I guess this would have been my second prenatal at a little over 13 weeks. Um, still nervous, but um, yeah, I just knew like, okay, I can, I'm gonna let myself be excited if, if she hears a healthy heartbeat with a Doppler. And I also prayed before that I would, that she'd be able to find the heartbeat right away. Um, cause with Charlie, when she, the midwife looked for the heart, his heartbeat, um, at 12 weeks, it was like a little bit hard, harder to find it. Like it wasn't too long, but it was, it did take a little bit, like a few minutes. And I just thought like, oh my gosh, if I have to wait a few minutes, like, I'm just going to be anxious. So I did pray before, like. This please, I pray she hears it right away. And um, she did, she heard it right away, like literally right away. And I should know also, I was just like the week or so, week and a half prior to this, I was like looking up how to feel my uterus. Cause I was like trying to find, you know, some way to kind of reassure myself that things were progressing as they should. Cause it was like, whatever, like a month or so, um, that I just had to wait, you know, from that ultrasound to this appointment. And so I was like feeling my, trying to feel my uterus, like, cause they were saying on my app <laughs> that like, oh, your uterus comes out from your pelvis. That, 12 weeks, so you should be able to feel like a hard, round bump, or I don't know. And I was like, every, it was becoming like obsessive. And I was just feeling, I was just like constantly, whenever I could lay down and like try and feel my uterus. And I was just like, I don't know if this is it. What if I like, I can't feel it. Like, is the baby growing? Like, it was just, yeah, and then God kind of reeled me back in and was just like, okay, if you're gonna, if you are gonna do this, you just need to do this like once a day. Um, just like a very gentle conviction, basically, I felt. And so then I just started do, to do that once a day. But I know that it was funny because I told the, the OB about this. And she's also the OB that, so when I had a miscarriage a year, or yeah, over a year ago, um, the midwife, like after she didn't 
you know, see a heartbeat and the baby's growth was off, like on her ultrasound, she told me that I should schedule something at the uh, pregnancy center down the road from her and um, just because they do free ultrasound. So then like a few days later I had an ultrasound and that's when I was like, it was confirmed that I, the baby had passed, but the OB that was volume, or uh, the OB that I have been seeing is the OB that was volunteering there. Um, and it's like a Christian pregnancy center. So I'm pretty sure she's probably a Christian. And so, yeah, that's how I like decided to start seeing her because I also knew her and she's very sweet. She's not like, like I've heard some stories about OBs, how it's just like, I don't know, they're very like, just not warm like a midwife, you know? <laughs> but she's very sweet and so that made me, you know, feel better too. What was I saying even? <laughs> oh yeah, so then I was telling her about the uterus thing before she looked for the heartbeat and she felt my tummy and she's like, oh yeah, it's right there. I'm like, what? She's like, yeah, I felt it right away. <laughs> And I was just like, oh my goodness, I just should never have t tried to feel for my uterus ever again. <laughs> now I feel it pretty clearly. Yeah, that was kind of funny. But then yeah, she found the heartbeat right away. So that was definitely an answer to prayer. And then a few days later, I just wanted to see the baby one more time. Um, just because it's it had grown obviously it had been weak so it looked more like a baby um and i just wanted yeah i just wanted to see the baby one more time before i shared on social media and so i went to like a a private ultrasound place like this woman owns she just does ultrasounds there um she's like trained and certified. She doesn't diagnose medically or anything, but it's more just, I don't know, for women who, like an elective ultrasound, they call it. So, um, and she's also a believer, which is cool. So, um, I did that. And like I said, I don't, <laughs> I don't want to get a, a bunch of ultrasounds. Like after this, I'm, I'm going to get a 20 week ultrasound. Well, actually I'll be 18 weeks, but like the anatomy scan. But then other than that, I'm not getting any more unless like I need to for some reason. But yeah, so I did that and I got to see the baby actually like moving around and look more like a baby. Um, and I didn't plan on having her like hear the, listen to the heartbeat on the ultrasound because I heard listening to the ultra or listening to the heartbeat on ultrasound is like more powerful um than even like a doppler um or just like regular ultrasound and or just like seeing the ultrasound like the picture like listening to it is like more intense she did she asked me if i wanted to hear it and i just was like okay really quick so then she literally listened to it for like three seconds and she was like, yeah, it's a very healthy heartbeat. Um, and so that was a special time, but then I did get really anxious after that about like that I hurt my baby from having her listen to the ultra or listen to the heartbeat for like a few seconds. I just, I feel like it definitely was spiritual warfare because it was like, I just felt so heavy and oppressed and like, I hurt my baby, you know, just, it was, it was hard. But then I, I went on YouTube and I looked up like, like listening to the heartbeat on ultrasound and like these girls were getting, listening to the heartbeat of their baby at like six or seven weeks. Like most of them were like, yeah, six or seven weeks. And there was a lot of them and like people on forums saying that they did that, like they've gotten mul multiple ultrasounds and heard the heartbeat every time on the ultrasound for a few seconds and they were like earlier long. At that point I was like 14 weeks when I got that ultrasound so I was like okay now I, 
I was, I'm in the second trimester, so like the baby can handle it more. And so, I don't know, I just needed that reassurance, but I still had anxiety, so I did pray. Like, God, just take away my burdens, take away my anxiety, lift them from me. And it wasn't like right then and there, but it was just like as I, I don't know, maybe like a half hour, hour later or something, I was just like cooking. And I just kind of had these worries still, and then I, they just literally were lifted off of me. Like, this has happened, it doesn't happen all the time, but it ha it's happened a a good amount of times where just I literally feel like anxiety is being lifted off like taken away from me and it's not my own doing like I couldn't just do that and it was literally out of nowhere so like I don't know it was God so that was pretty cool I felt more peace after that I think I got anxious about something else oh yeah then I so like the day before I turned 14 weeks like I had felt I thought a little movement um, and then like I started it seemed like every day I'd feel a little something and then um, but she did ultrasound tech did say I had a anterior placenta which means it's like right in front so sometimes it's harder to feel the baby moving because until you're further along, like, you know, even nearing your third trimester sometimes, or like mid to late 20s. Um, because yeah, like the placenta is right there, so it's an extra cushion. So if the baby is kicking right there, like on the placenta, like you won't really feel it when they're this small. But I read like you can feel it, like if they're not, if they're not kicking on the placenta, but um, like, you know, lower near uterus or like high or on the sides, but a lot of, you know, the uterus, the placenta is big. So, and they like to kind of like hide by it. So a lot of times you're not, when they are like moving and kicking, you're not gonna feel it. But um, yeah, so like I was, I, it seemed like I was kind of feeling just little, flutters, little, maybe little kicks, um, regularly, like every day at least, even if it wasn't a lot. Then it was like three days or so that I didn't feel anything and I just felt really anxious again. And then I looked on all of these forums, um, online and like, um, they were just, yeah, saying like, yeah, especially like I had experienced the same thing and then I didn't, you know, like I felt movement early on and then I didn't feel anything for like a month or, you know, and I have an anterior placenta. So there's like a lot of women saying stuff like that. And I messaged my midwife, like not the OB, but the midwife that I'm going to start seeing. And she was like, yeah, like I'm surprised you even felt anything. Um, it's like very difficult to feel anything this early, especially with an anterior placenta, like sometimes impossible. <laughs> and so she's like, please don't worry about this. And so that helped me. She's a believer too. So she was like, just rest in, you know, God's care for this baby. And, um, yeah, so then I kind of got over that <laughs> and I feel like I felt more a few more movements like yeah like, and not I know that I also learned like this early on too like the movements aren't going to be regular like they don't become regular until like really your third trimester and so um but yeah I just I do feel like I felt like just very yeah very slight little like like maybe like a little tumble but or like a little like kick um but the baby's pretty small like the baby the baby's like the size of an avocado right now i don't know if, i think that's like lengthwise but and then they're also like curled up too so they're like even smaller really 
when they're like in the womb, they, they're not really like totally stretched out usually. So anyway, I'm just so eager to feel movements like more intensely and regularly. <laughs> what are you gonna tell mama? I can't tell mama. Go back to school. It's a Packers on. Say hello. <laughs> hello. <laughs> so in a week from now or yeah a week from tomorrow I'll have my first prenatal with my midwife and she's gonna listen to the heartbeat and okay just a little update um I had my appointment with my midwife yesterday um so I'm editing this like a week later but and she heard the heartbeat and it was very healthy so that was a relief like and at the day before i had felt lots of movements but then that day i hadn't felt any and i was pretty sure i was sure everything was fine but it's still very discomforting to actually hear the heartbeat so and then in a few days I can find out the gender, so exciting stuff. Okay, just, I don't wanna like rush. <laughs> it's hard because I don't wanna like just trying to distract. I don't wanna distract myself and just like, I just have to get through this week or like, you know, I wanna like enjoy the process and just take things day by day and enjoy my days. Um, and not just be thinking of like, oh, a week from now, or a month from now, you know? But I am very eager to hear the heartbeat again, and a week and a half from now, I'm gonna have an ultrasound with, like, at the hospital, so the anatomy scan, and they're gonna find out the gender. And so that's also really hard to wait for too. <laughs> just, yeah, being able to see the baby again, and I think especially after like having the anatomy scan, seeing the baby this far along and like if they're all healthy and everything, like I'll definitely be, I feel like my anxiety be, will be way down. Like it's it's down, definitely down from like what it was early on, but like the more I progress and the baby's healthy and everything, like anxiety will be less and less. Yeah, I mean, miscarriage, having a miscarriage is like, there's PTSD along with it. I can't really get away from that because I had to, you know, it was, it was traumatic. I believe God will redeem that and that he already has redeemed it. It almost doesn't seem real sometimes. I'm like, what? <laughs> I just, I don't know. I'm very thankful. I thank God every day for this baby. I pray for the baby every day and I thank God every day for this baby. And back to the foster care, like like I said, we still want to do that. It's still in our hearts. It's just more of a matter of like when, matter of when. Um, yeah, because I'm like, do I want to, would I want to take in a child like a few months before? Well, and then it's like, Usually it's like sibling groups, like two or more that need placement for like adoption. Uh, yeah, I guess Matt definitely doesn't want to take in anyone, like any child right now. And then I'm like, well, I don't think I'd want to like a few months, like I think I'd, it'd have to be at least like maybe like three months postpartum, but I don't even know. We'll have to see. <laughs> like it will happen does you know as far as my desires go for that like it will happen but i just i'm like not totally sure on the timeline of that so that's a little update if you could be praying for the baby and for my health i also kind of have like i'm trying to do everything i can to like um take care of my body more and um not that i totally neglected it when i was pregnant with charlie but you know, I, I, there's lots of things that I didn't really implement 
um, and that I lacked when I was pregnant with Charlie that may have like kind of caused a preeclampsia with him or like worsened it. And so I'm really also trying to do everything I can to like not get that again or I don't know. <laughs> so it's not like, I think the chances, you know, with your second baby and if you're like healthier and don't have nutritional de deficiencies and are eating enough protein and everything, like the chances of getting preeclampsia again are like pretty low, but it's still like you still have a higher chance than s of getting it than someone who didn't have it before. So, um, yeah, just be praying for me like, or my health and then obviously the baby's health. Um, it goes hand in hand. So, um, yeah, thank you for watching this and I will see you in the next one.